My name is Sunny Townsend and I work for a young tech company called Mastodon C. Today I want to talk to you about breaking down silos around demographic data and models, experience of the city's local authorities. The work I will present today is based on a project involving many people. I'd like to start by acknowledging them, in particular Chris Adams for his work on user experience, Anthony Woods for his work on user interface, and Elizabeth Weiss on um, managing the project. We work very closely with demography expertise at the GLA, the Greater London Authority. I'd like to thank Ben Core, Marshall Atsley, Monica Lee and Will Tonkis. So many organisations have a legacy of data distributed around held in disparate silos and uncoordinated way, which means accessing data is often an ad hoc process, can cause lengthy delays and even make it impossible. So how familiar is this scenario to you? I can't do what I need to do until someone else shares their data. Master and C have come together with DLA and obtained three years of funding from Innovate UK to see whether technology can help address the problem of information silos in local government with the aim of making cities run better. So, given this collaboration, you may have guessed that the city in question is London. Currently, London, are run, London boroughs are running their own ward population projections. This is as part of the school roles projection service provided by the GLA. The projections are based on housing development assumptions. They use the GLA's demographic models and they run on Master on C's platform Witam. We work closely with the GLA to meet their requirements that the software was self-service, robust and customizable. So Witam has been described as excellent, functional, but not sexy, which we're pretty happy with. So I want to take you through the eyes of a London borough using Witam. They come to this page, first they would contact us for, for credentials, then they go to this website and enter in their credentials through a secure login. So this is the page where the borough would create a new projection. They start by giving their projection a name, they can choose a description, um, make the projection available to others if they wish, then they can select from three models, one trend base and two housing linked ward projection models that they customise the borough and the fertility assumption around input borough level projections. They press, uh, and their boroughs need to upload their housing development assumptions. This is the number of net new dwellings by ward and year. And then they press go. The model takes about 90 seconds to run and outputs the projections as CSVs. These include population projections needed by the GLA for the school roles projections but also births, deaths, and migration projections. So I'm interested in the potential silo busting effects of this tool. But before we can look into that, I need to give you a bit more context. And what we know um, about the original, how the original system worked in terms of how the GLA interacted with the boroughs. So in the minimum case, the GLA could would provide the development data and would run the models, and then the send the school role projections to the school roles officer in the borough. But many boroughs want to be able to make, the, um, make use of inputting their own data. This would likely involve several departments, so the planning department would provide the development data to a demographer who acts as a gatekeeper on the data and projections. They would send the data to the GLA, who would run the models and return the school roles and the population projections. And then uh, the demographer would pass the school roles projections on to the school roles officer. This is a uh, good practice that was known to occur in at least one borough. However, when a planning department communicates directly with the GLA, other users don't have access to the data unless it's explicitly emailed or shared in some way. So each department could interact independently with the GLA. So what we know about how the original system worked is that sometimes there was one borough contact, sometimes there were several. Uh, all boroughs seem to be structured differently and there was a prevalence of silos in some boroughs between departments. The key thing that Witan has done is to move the population projection process to within the borough. So now, in a good practice borough, the planning department would need to send the development data to the demographer, who would upload it to Witan and generate their population projections, pass these to the GLA who would run their school roles model, return the school roles projections to the demographer, who then pass these on to the school roles officer. In theory, this might be how it would look, but no one was actually sure how it would look. So when we set up uh, Witam, we also set up a user database. This is the user profile for Ben Kaur from the GLA. It gives quite a rich picture, including conversations Ben had with members of Mass and C, 
uh, like Bruce and Chris. On the right, it shows his activity on Witten, like creating a projection or downloading an output. You can also tag people. So on the left-hand side, you can see Ben was tagged for creating a projection. So we were able to use his tag, which various users were from. And so who used Witten? There are 33 boroughs in London, and we had 64 users in 32 boroughs. That's an average of two borough users per borough. However, there was some variation around this. The graph shows the number of users per borough. In quite a few boroughs, there was only one user, whereas in one, there was five. Which department to use with term? We saw expected job titles like town planner, demographer, and school place planner. But we also saw less expected job titles, such as strategic renewal officer and finance analyst. You might think this might reflect the, the rise of intelligence departments in the boroughs. And how active are the users? This graph shows the number of web sessions per user. We think this over-dispersed shape suggests that there are probably two kinds of users. Many users seem to have come onto Witter and to have a look around or just do the minimum needed for their projections. And this is reflected in the median of four web sessions. However, we identify another kind of user that was testing out scenarios and sensitivity around assumptions that, mean, that makes the mean of the distribution 41 web sessions. And one user who really did run with it, with over 1,200 sessions. So I think we can argue this is the first silo busting effect the return has had. Um, by putting the model in the hands of the boroughs, they were able to configure the, the model and carry out scenario and sensitivity testing of their own. <clears throat> We also collected data on Witan in a very different form through interviews. This was mostly done on the phone, but we also went down to the borough's uh, offices in some cases, and it was really valuable seeing where they, where they worked firsthand. What we discovered through these interviews was how important the proce process of actively uploading the development data was. Before Witan, at least one borough had not been using their own development data, whereas after Witan, they started experimented, experimenting. In another borough, a silo had developed between planning and demography. By using Witten, demography realised that the planning department had not been sending development data to the GLA. So I think we can argue that by the software requiring the borough to actively choose their development data, this created a dialogue in some boroughs which either didn't exist before or had been lost. Another very interesting effect of boroughs being forced to upload their planning data was that they could see how the quality of the data affected their results. In one borough, they said, one thing we've really learned is that the projection is only as good as the data coming in. And using WITAM has encouraged them to clean up their database. So by the borough having to effectively eat its own data, they realised the problems with the data and it is now being cleaned by the people who know it best. In one borough where the different departments were communicating directly with the GLA, there was no access to projections unless explicitly emailed within the borough. The situation has not changed with Witten. One thing that Witten hasn't yet solved is group sharing of projections. This is something we're working on. So, what are the projections used for? The school rule projections are submitted to the Department for Education School Capacity and Planning Survey, SCAP. Um, which is the basis of funding new schools. Um, the rest are some, the rest are, uh, I'm going to walk, talk through are some responses we've had in conversations with Boroughs. So, uh, in one borough, we found that they were using projection to apply for funding to support large numbers of immigrants. Uh, the projection uh, formed the basis of men generating many further data sets, um, such as older people, adult social care, uh, public health population churn and just for inputting into the borough's own projection models. Um, the birth, death and migration projections uh, were used for understanding demographic change uh, generally more detail. So where are we going next? Well, we have a remit to build better software to improve cities. We need testers and feedback on what we're doing. We very much value the collaboration of experts, which I hope comes across in this talk. We're looking for models to put on the platform, so please get in touch. We're currently working on an open cohort component model for English local authorities. This, should have, this will have a flexible framework developed with experts of the GLA to be able to adapt to the data available. 
For example, we've talked to New York, uh, where they have counties at the equivalent, uh, as the equivalent of London boroughs, and only five of them. The data comes in five-year age bands. They don't have the origin destination data we have. Therefore, they rely on inferring migration from the change between each census. And therefore, they require a net migration model rather than a gross migration model, um, uh, as we can use here in the UK. Um, we're working on a new version of Witten with group sharing and lots more shiny features. The direct qu quote from me is that this will be not only excellent and functional, but also a hot potato. Thank you for listening. Here are some contact details. Please come speak to us.